Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Watchman. Here at The Cheap Watchman, we talk about high-value watches, and today we're talking about why this watch right here is still the best watch under $200 and usually under $150. What is it? You're going to have to wait to find out. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about this awesome watch. If you are new here, please consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up. I know you haven't even watched it. So how are you going to like a video you haven't watched? Trust me. You can always take your, you can always thumb it down later. I am just trying to get this channel off the ground. I have another channel. That one right there. The Cheap Audio Man where we talk about hi-fi home theater and headphones. I will link it in the description if you like hi-fi or you're even hi-fi curious. Right on over there, we have over 700 videos. But you don't want to hear about that. You want to hear about this awesome watch. I'm trying to keep it a bit of a mystery because it's almost, almost cliche how much everybody loves this watch. What if I told you a watch could have true history, true unique design, functionality, and in-house movement and be completely unique and not an homage to anything. Would you say I was lying to you? Most people would. This is the Orient Mako 2, the blue variant, the blue dial. There are probably a hundred videos on the Mako 2. People love this watch because it's not trying to be an homage to anything. They love this watch because it basically is Seiko's little Horror brother. It's owned by the Epson Corporation, which is owned by Seiko. They have in-house movements. They're gorgeous. And for me, these have some design characteristics that supersede a lot of watches that I have that are multiples in price. And it wears perfectly on me. This is actually a watch that I use as somewhat of a template to measure other watches against if I'm going to buy something more expensive. What's on my wrist today? This is my Tudor 79230 Black Bay. It's a big one. It's like the 41 millimeter. Love this watch. I didn't love it when I first got it. I mean, I liked it when I first got it, but it was something that I had to just continue to wear it. Something about the brushed top of the lugs. I really like it. I really like this watch. And people say this is a big watch, but you don't really even notice the slabby sides. Anyway, you're not here for that. You're here for the best watch under $200, period. It just so happens that it's a dive watch. I personally love dive watches. But let's go through this really quickly because I don't think you want to be here talking about an older watch because the Mako 3 has actually come out. And that's the watch that I actually wanted to bring in and do it because I wanted to compare it. But I have this sitting on my bedside table and I continually look down at it and just marvel and how awesome it is. But first, let's talk about a couple of things that I didn't like, one of which was it's a super highly polished finish. If you look at this watch, you may notice that it almost looks titanium. That's because what I did is I took out a, a Scotch Bright and I rubbed off all the high polish. I know, heresy, but I just think highly polished finishes on cheap watches look cheap because how are you going to do a finish that good on a watch that's 150 bucks this is 150 dollars 150 dollars like homage watches are more i can't find homage watches from san martin and people will probably say these are better why this is a clone a ripoff and if you're cool with that fine but man this is the watch for me you may notice that the Included bracelet is not on here anymore because it's terrible. Okay, even though this is the best watch under $200 Period just kidding. It had to have some changes to get there one of which was jettisoning jettisoning the uh, The stock bracelet because it was terrible hollow end links that didn't made up to the case I'm sure maybe the bracelets. Okay, but I put this on an Artem, I believe, sail cloth strap. They sent this in to me, not Orient, Artem did. 22 millimeter, okay? So you can change out the straps. This case size is what, 41 and a half millimeters? It's a little bit on the big side, 41 and a half millimeters without the crown. A little bit on the big side, but kind of perfect for me. And it lays 
real flat. Water resistance down to 200 meters. Let's talk about the biggest reason this is the best watch under $200. Style is absolutely spectacular. I was just buying an expensive watch and there was a Breitling, it was a Super Ocean. I had never seen that watch before and I almost, I walked in there to buy a Tudor. I almost walked out with the Breitling simply because there was something about the dial and it was a huge chunky watch, too big for me actually, and I'm so glad I didn't get it. It was black steel though, gorgeous. It was a Super Ocean, 46 millimeter, and I could not figure out why I liked this watch so much. And it finally dawned on me. It's because it looks like a $5,000 version of this. It has Arabic, num or the Super Ocean had Arabic numerals at the 12, the 6, and the 9. Had a very deep, blue, gorgeous dial, but not a sunburst style like this. And then it had a chapter ring around the edge. It was basically the luxury version of this. And I'm so glad I had to think about it for a while. I'm like, why do I love this watch so much? Because of the Orient. And you can get the Orient for $150, not $5,000, $150, better than $5,000. The dial is a sunburst blue. When I first got this watch, I went to think about it until I wore it outside and I was blown away. The chapter ring, again, same color blue, brings a little bit more depth into the dial. The Orient logo wasn't my favorite at first, but it grew on me. The Arabic numerals at six, nine, and 12 give a very, very, give off an explore vibe from Rolex. But guess what? Rolex didn't make Arabic numerals. Other people get to use them on their watches too. There was something about this watch that kind of is like, I'm an adventure watch and I'm a dive watch. Okay. And it's the uh, Arabic numerals. I love Arabic numerals. And that's one of the reasons why I never ended up getting, I think the Kamasu was the better version of this because about the same size, sapphire crystal, but I didn't like it because it didn't have Arabic numerals on it. Now they have a Mako 3. Although I don't, I'm not super excited about the colors that they came out with, but anyway, I'm gonna buy one anyway. When they come down, right now I think they're $300. I don't wanna spend $300 on an Orient. But I'll wear it. I wear this all the time. This is an in-house caliber F6922 with approximately 40 hours of power reserve. And this thing actually has a pretty sweepy sweep. And this thing is only 13 millimeters thick for, for watch this size. And it wears a lot smaller then it feels, it wears big, broad, but kind of flat, like a delicious blue diving pizza. Just kidding, this thing's really pretty. In-house movement, you've got history. It's not ripping anybody else off. The fourth reason why I love this watch, the handset. I love the sorty, sorty handset. Most importantly though, I love the red tip on the seconds and there's a lot of watches out there that just seem super cheap. And the handset on this one would be at home on a $1,000 watch. If I saw these this handset on a $1,000 watch, I wouldn't be like, God, this thing looks cheap. It looks great. Are we up to four? I guess I need to figure out fifth one. Okay, it's functional and the price. At $150, guess what I'm not worried about? Taking this to the pool, which I do all the time. And the contrast on this dial makes it a snap to tell the time, except when I'm not wearing my glasses because I'm in a pool. It's difficult to tell the time on any watch. This is like a wall clock. So you got contrast, it's $150. You've got real history. You've got a watch that is not trying to be any other watch. Is it perfect? Of course not. The crown is terribly small. It's a little bit gravelly. The bezel, it's not easy to move. You really have to get in there. The bezel insert just kind of lays on top of the bezel, but I don't know, man. This th There's something that's charming about this watch's limitations. It's charming in its limitations because again, this is not a $500 watch. This is, you can probably get it for like 130 bucks on eBay eBay, but it's the dial, it's the Arabic numerals, it's the depth of the dial, it's the hands, it's the movement, 
It's the way this watch lays on my wrist. Another thing I love about this watch, the way the lugs kind of come out of the bezel. I don't know if I can explain this correctly. There's some dive watches from like Oris. So it just looks like a giant circle with like these stubby, stubby lugs coming out of the bottom. I don't like that. I like a watch like this where the bezel seems to kind of lay on top of the whole watch and the lugs kind of come naturally come from the sides. That's just a personal preference thing though. This is legit for me the best perfect watch under $200. You might have to take the bracelet off and throw it away. You may have to take some scotch bright and unbrighten something. <laughs> unbrighten the case finish you could do that though at 150 dollars for your watch you can do that they have uh that's not a mako 2 i was gonna say they have a black raven version of the kamasu if they had a black version of this i'd probably buy 12 of them wear them every day of the week and then switch some out daily so if you like the style of this video please subscribe um i do mostly affordable watches but occasionally there's going to be more expensive watches because i don't always practice what i preach and sometimes i have some luxury watches that i splurge on so don't worry about spending a bunch of money on watches unless you can afford it buy what you can buy a 150 dollar mako too take some scotch bright some sandpaper make it your own and fill your soul with happiness enjoy every minute of it and with that i'm randy i'm the cheap watchman